okay. <clears throat> you know, I've said this before. And uh, I don't think people realize how rooted into this people are. That even when people out here say that they look to the word of God for truth, that there are even people that profess this that are still not indoctrinated. Because realize what people have been preaching for years, they have been preaching for years. This isn't overnight that the message that people have been giving out here is something that they, it just spurred overnight. If it, even if it's a truth, they didn't just start speaking the truth yesterday. If it was a falsehood, they didn't start just speaking the falsehood yesterday. So people really need to see, see what they're rooted in. Are they rooted in what man has said? Or are they rooted in what the Bible has said? Do we think that what people have been speaking all these years is what the Bible says? Or is it what man says? And I think if you'll get the calculator out, if you got a calculator and you can know right from wrong here, I think you'll find out that what people are preaching today is a message that God has never given anybody. Because it does not add up. And it seems that whenever I look things up out here, I see what people are preaching out here is not the truth. Now, I know I'm not the only one out here, but it doesn't make sense. So I tried to look something up because I don't know where it's at, and you guys have seen it a thousand times. You guys know what scripture it is, but I don't know what scripture it is. Is it in Thessalonians where he says, that he has given the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. Now, before you start reading that, I want you to I want you to try to understand something. If you go back and you look at it, and I hope I'm not wrong because I tried to look for it a minute ago. I remember what I remember kind of what it says. Are you so sure that before that comment there in the Bible that he ever preached the gospel to you before? Because I would be willing to bet that that is the first place, that is the first time that Paul has ever brought up the death, burial, and resurrection as being the gospel. Now, if you read before that, why does it sound like that Paul has given that message before? Because I think the message that Paul has given before is a bigger message than simply believing in the death, burial, and resurrection. Because I don't think you'll find it one place that Paul ever preached death, burial, and resurrection as, as death, burial, and resurrection that there was a different message being given there. And I don't think people, in, I don't think everybody's incorporated the message being given there when Paul says that. And then I always wondered, how could somebody believe in vain? How could you believe, how could he give you this message that he made it sound like he had given before? And I'm sticking my neck on the line that, it, that I'm saying that that's what it's saying. Go back and read. What it says, as if he has given you somewhat of a message of this before. But where did he ever speak the death, burial, and resurrection before? And why would he say it unless you believed in vain? Because I know that the simply believing, if that's all you think it is, 
to believe in the gospel is to believe what, what Jesus did. How could you have ever believed in vain? And let me ask you this. I've said this a couple of times lately. Why would you have to need the Holy Spirit to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection if that's all it took to be saved? There was actually something else I had in mind a minute ago and I forgot it. And, uh... Another message that I had a minute ago. Uh... Why would you need to be renewed? Why would you need to be regenerated? Why would you need to be a new creation in Christ if all you had to do was believe in the death, burial, and resurrection? Why would you need grace from God if all you needed to do was believe in the death, burial, and resurrection? It doesn't make sense. Because what people have incorporated and what people are preaching out here, you know, because I've heard multiple people give different examples of the gospel. Some people go to the book of Acts and some are first Corinthians or wherever it's at. But what I just witnessed a minute ago, uh, when I looked up something, it gave a different outlook. But the only downfall is, is I cannot prove what I read was for the Gentiles because it it said something and then it said something about the Gentiles. But if it was as easy as believing and you think your life doesn't have to change to be saved, then why would you need the Holy Spirit? Why would you need to be renewed, regenerated, and a new creation? All that is is a question. There is no logic in what people believe out here. And what people did for years and years and years and years and years. Ever since Paul being the last person to give a message except the book of Revelation. Outside of John and outside of Paul. Because I really do believe the Bible is exactly the way God wanted it. And if, and if you want to know why I say that, is because at least Paul, at least in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, that is before Galatians and Ephesians. And he said that these people would not inherit the kingdom. Do not be deceived. And then later on he says, like I told you before, and I really do believe that if you, if you, you know, God isn't stupid. I know that when God put all this stuff together, there is a reason why this stuff is exactly the way it is in the Bible. Even Jesus. You know, people can say, there wasn't no J, there wasn't no J, there wasn't no J. I don't want to hear it, man. I don't want to hear it. Because if it was so important that we need to know Yahushua or whatever it was, then God would have made sure that it would have never been Jesus in any Bible. If there would have never been no power to save anybody in the Bible because you used the name Jesus, then God would have never, ever, ever given his word. This is how ignorant people are out here because that's exactly what some people will say. That you need to use a specific name. It's just like if you're not, if you're not, if you don't believe in flat earth, you're not saved. Just like if you don't believe in Trinity, then you don't know the truth either. It's just like if you don't keep the Sabbath, you're not saved. Because ultimately, that's exactly what these people are saying in their messages. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. only thing I got to say, if you're a wicked individual, you're not getting into the kingdom, and that's a fact. That's a fact.
And again, I know what makes a person a wicked individual, and I still know what it takes to be covered under the blood. And as long as you're in darkness, you're a wicked individual. So tell me how, if you can be call yourself a child of light and be in sin and be wicked, how can you be how can you be of God? See, you guys have already twisted the word, haven't you? Sure have. You guys have already twisted the word, haven't you? And for me to sit here and think that God really wanted people to listen to people that came out at a later point in time that tried to figure out the Bible when even, even in the last hundred, I, I found it, I found a scripture one day and I read an article about this scripture. And when I read about this scripture, they said in this article that about a hundred plus years ago, they changed the meaning of what that scripture meant. I wonder how many times that's been happening in society that people have changed what these scriptures have meant even from the Reformation to Paul and John. If John was the last one and Paul was the last one and maybe even James or whoever wrote Titus, I think that may have been Paul. But let me ask you, I know, I knew, I knew you wouldn't let me out, Car. Don't worry about that. I always think about trying to get revenge on you people, but then I'm too kind-hearted. Yeah, I am too kind-hearted about getting my revenge. So, I mean, this, this logic does not make sense, man. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to sit here and think that even when John Calvin, somebody that went around deceiving the world, giving a message and people loving his message and other people incorporating other people from back then, even though there was a person that John Calvin knew that believed you could lose salvation. And there was even a person even way before that, that believed you could lose the Holy Spirit. And then you had Augusta and everything.